In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to create a headboard for your bed with SketchUp and then render it out in V-Ray. Let's go. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to yet another video of our Arc Gyan channel, a channel all about architecture, tech design, BIM and a whole lot more. So let's kick things off. I'm going to open SketchUp and then show you guys how to create a headboard. Let's go. All right. So we are in our studio scene. I'm just going to round this off. So select the two edges and click on the round corner plugin. Round corner plugin is a super useful plugin to have and is a must have if you are serious about SketchUp modeling and also rendering. So I'm going to change this to around 600. Press OK. And then just click outside to make that change. So we have a perfectly rounded off edge. This way we can bounce off the light easily once we've done creating our headboard. And you'll find the link to this SketchUp file in case you don't have a studio in the description below. All right, so start off, I'm going to create a rectangle. So a headboard size is generally around six feet or yeah, six feet by six feet. So this is our headboard. Generally, the bed size is around five to six feet. So we're going to keep a large headboard. Now I'm going to right click, go to Clothworks and make this a cloth. I'm now going to make some pins on the edges. So I'm going to make a rectangle of the same size. So six feet by four inches. All right, make this a rectangle and move it here. We can now right click on this group and make it a component call this pins side pins we're going to give some thickness to this component so i'm going to extend it up by four inches and i'm also going to move it down a bit and move it to the center we're now going to rotate this so we can draw a line in the center of this rectangle to find the midpoint i'm going to rotate it from the center by 90 and multiply it into four. So we array it by four times. All right, we're now going to make our buttons. So the best way to make a button is first drawing a circle. So the size could be a radius of one inch. So I'm going to make a radius of one inch. So the dia is two inches. Make this a group and extend it out by two inches. Uh, two inches seems a bit much. We can adjust that later. We can now make a sphere in SketchUp. I hope you guys know how to make a sphere. So let's make a circle of radius two inches. And we're gonna make another circle. Now before I click anywhere, I'm gonna activate the circle tool by pressing C. And I'm gonna press the right arrow key to snap it to the right axis or the red axis. Now to find the center point, just hover over the sides of the circle and you'll find the center. And just make it like this. So we have two circles like this. Now select this face, the bottom face, and click on the follow me tool, and click on the second face. So we made our sphere. Now select this, make it a group, and simply just drag that down. So we made a button. Now we can move this to the center. So let's try to find the center. If you can't find the center, what you can do is enter the group, and you'll find the center this way. Simply select the entire. So we found a center and drawn a temporary line to use as our reference. And we're going to move this to the center of this. All right. So this seems to be in the center. Now we can select both these groups, right click and click on explode and just make it a group. So it's a single group. If you don't want these lines to be seen, just enter the group, use the eraser tool, press hold shift on your keyboard and delete these lines. All right, now we're going to make this a component. So right click, make component, call this buttons, button pins, press OK. And now we're going to place this in the center here. So it didn't make this a group. So I'm going to select this entire face, control X, enter this group, a component and go to edit and click on paste in place. So that places it inside the component. Now we're going to move this inside and I'm going to evenly distribute it. So I'm going to hide these pins for now. We haven't made them pins as yet in our Clothworks plugin. All right. So what I'm going to do is just divide this line or maybe just draw another line for reference. Right click, 
divide and we're going to divide it into four segments yeah four segments and also divide this line move this out a bit and divide it by four segments all right so now we're going to draw our reference lines place it here and multiply it into two similarly we need to draw our reference line here as well so select these lines and place it there and multiply by two all right so now we're going to place this in the center of these intersections or at the intersections that is so we're going to take our center which is here and place it you can press y on your keyboard to activate the x-ray mode and place it here all right and now we can just multiply and copy it at the intersections so select all of these move the use the move and copy tool and place it here as well multiply it into two so we placed our buttons as well now we can delete all these additional lines all right great so now we're going to make our pins and also our cloth i think the cloth is already made right click on the rectangle go to cloth works yes it is a cloth now we're going to select these boxes or just select one box right click go to cloth works and click on make pin is this also made as a pin no we need to select these components and make it a pin as well and select all of these pins or buttons that is right click go to cloth works and click on make pins i'm also going to move these pins down a bit all right great so now we're ready to run our simulation i'm going to save this file do a save as if you're making it in your 3d warehouse go to file save as and i'm going to call this create a headboard so you'll get this file as well in the link in the description all right so save and now we're going to just adjust our settings so click on the toggle ui i hope you have clothworks installed you will get the trial license but adaptive grid generate thickness and movable pins don't work if you do want the full version you can download it from sketchucation it costs about 30 dollars all right so now we can go to cloth and switch on drag drag is on and that's about it so we can run the simulation and see how it goes so click on toggle play oh we forgot the main thing which was we're supposed to subdivide the surface so select the rectangle right click go to cloth works go to one cloth and apply uh, apply a quadrilateral grid i'm going to give a resolution of 3000 and click on yes all right so we applied the grid and now it should work so let's run the simulation and as you can see let's also hide the it started to create those creases now i'm going to add some gravity to this so go to simulation and increase the wind speed so that creates your tufted pattern so that's how simple it is uh, you can go ahead and give more buttons in between and create your tufted pattern and once you're done and you're happy with the design just click on stop simulation so that's how simple it is and you create it or oh, this seems to be a bit too much so we can just reduce it or uh, reduce it so go to simulation and reduce the all right yeah so just reduce the wind speed of a win z direction and you've got a better result all right so now we can select all of these make it a group move it out a bit and if you want to rotate it you can use the q tool snap it to the red axis and rotate it by 90. so it's a pretty big headboard with not many creases but we can scale it down so use the scale tool and scale it down ideally you need to scale it uniformly so scale from the edge and we have a nice tufted pattern headboard so that's how simple it is now if you want to change the material i would suggest that you change the material from the vray acid editor so click on acid editor go to your materials and you can create a generic material or you can also select a material from the vray library so let's check what's on fabrics you can drag any of these materials in so let's drag a red color fabric enter the group right click on the material and click on apply to selection 
Do not worry if the color in the SketchUp window is different from that of your Acid Editor. Generally, the final result is from the Acid Editor and not from the SketchUp window. All right, so if you want to change the color, simply go to Binding. So you can see the texture which it's using is this. What you can do is um, right click, copy this and uh, change this to auto and you can see that the color changes in the SketchUp window as well. So let's see how this looks in render. So let's place it in the middle of our studio and click on render with VRA Interactive. Make sure the settings are on. So I'm going to use NVIDIA AI. Denoiser is on. RTX is on since I have a graphic card and click on render with VRA Interactive. So this is how it looks in VRA Interactive. You can just scroll in a bit and see the creases. You can also apply the material to your component. So enter the group and apply the material using your bucket tool. And you can see that we've created our tufted pattern. So that's how simple it is, guys. I hope to see you create your own style of tufted pattern. You can achieve a lot with the Clothworks plugin and it's one of my favorite plugins on SketchUp. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. And I'll see you guys in the future videos. Cheers. All right, guys. So I hope you found this tutorial useful. This is part of a complete SketchUp and V-Ray course for interior design course. There's a lot more tutorials in that course. And it'll definitely take you from a beginner to an expert level, not only in SketchUp, but also in V-Ray. So you get to create photorealistic renders as well. So I hope to see you guys in the course inside. You'll find a link to the description below. And there's also an awesome offer if you use the link below. I'll see you guys in the future videos. This is your host and instructor Manish signing off. Cheers.